Shonies. Take all your clothes off and fold yourself 12 times. This is exactly what I say when I open a fresh package of origami paper. No, I'm not sexualizing the art form. But there is something about those creases. Hmm. Also, leaving your underwear on when you're clearly told to remove all clothing. Dude literally tries to fold himself 12 times but gets caught up on the never nude clause. I admire you, Rick. Weird time to be feeling admiration for one's intellect while staring into your coffee mug's brown eye. Also, Fart Mug is adorned with a Shoney's label and not one that reads Spencer Gifts. <laughs> Imagine deciding between Master Sword Morty and Spiked Bat Morty when throwing Star Morty's right freaking there! Spilling your breakfast pills and leaving them on the table. Especially the orange-pink one. Those things are like the bacon of the morning capsule meal industry. Stop saying his name! He abandoned us. I know I'm not supposed to cry over spilled milk, but... That Merlot didn't even have a chance to be sipped slowly after a snarky one-liner. Willem Dafoe! Th that's the guy I couldn't think of this morning. Not being able to remember Finding Nemo's Willem Dafoe. Let's go visit some memories. Oh, any particular ones? You want to see my first boner? Or should we go straight to the moment I discovered interdimensional travel? Let's go for the second choice. My first boner was at the front of my seventh grade math class after solving a difficult problem. Pretty sure that by the time I was done, everyone had solved for D. Yeah, well, tough titties. There's no tougher t than a psychotic break, Rick. I once watched a lady crush a six-pack of beer, watermelon, and a brick with her on an episode of America's Got Talent, so I'm inclined to disbelieve this fact. Between where you were on 9-11 and your favorite sports blooper? Rick is one of the most intelligent creatures in the history of creatures, and his favorite sports blooper isn't Jose Canseco headbutting a ball into the stands for a home run? Please. Also, how does this baseball ricochet upwards off of this nut shot? I've got a degree in testicle physics, and that's just not how it works. Look at these dead flies! Maybe if we arrange them in a certain order, it plays a hologram. Or it opens a secret door! Summer's over here tampering with evidence. In a world where the alien insect-based Galactic Empire rules with an iron fist, you'd think this might be a murder scene. And, uh, a bunch of the Szechuan sauce? Like, as much as you're allowed to give me. In the history of life-imitating art that imitates life, there's never been a bigger fluster cluck than the Rick and Morty Szechuan sauce wars. Here's 15 sins for nostalgia-based hysteria. And one sin back, because honestly, eh, it's a pretty good sauce. But also, the dude can invent multi-dimensional time portals, but can't recreate a sauce. Bug boners. Bugners? Bonugs? Honestly, I'm surprised with this much arousal, the bug suit's able to contain itself. Do you know how many suits or pairs of pants I've ripped from my bouts of excitement? None, because I'm perfectly proportioned. Why did they bury this world's Rick with a portal gun? In fact, why did they bury this world's Rick at all? Other Rick could have just easily thrown the corpse into a portal or incinerated or anything that wouldn't require the manual labor of digging a hole. I don't know yet. I'll make it up as I go. The motto from the Rick and Morty writer's room somehow makes its way into the episode. That's my sister. This used to be my home. Right, because weird stuff that happens in Rick and Morty is brought back and referenced by the show when it's convenient. What is the matter with you people? You're a bunch of back savages. Backstab avages. We got you on this one, Morty. No! A self-aware, elongated, and purposely created fictional decoy no is still a no. Yeah, that's the three lines of math that separates my life as a man from my life as an unfeeling ghost. Rejoice, Rick. Could be worse. I've heard three lines of coke can get you feeling like an unfeeling ghost. Math is a much healthier option. Gets me excited, at least. Possum possum. Wait, how does this bug know what a possum is? Did he study that much about Earth's animal kingdom to know how to make that clever animal rhyme? Always wait for permission to... I feel like acid reflux would be a result of the condition of the body and not the consciousness. And so the insect alien shouldn't have Rick's heartburn once Rick's mind transferred. And if you're telling me that acid reflux becomes a part of a person's soul, then I... I hate everything. Well, what's the level 9 master access code again? Nathan Fillion doing a Rick Sanchez impersonation is everything I need in my life. What a treasure. But also, I'm still mad that he never got to do Uncharted. And this show reminded me of that emotion in a roundabout way, so... I'm bummed I didn't get to give that insect a test drive. Wait, you said you had to take a level 9 dump. Does that mean this insect species poos out of their... Some things are better off unimagined. D-99, this is the commander-in-chief of the Citadel's militia. G uh, good enough. He's a spy, blow him up. I'm gonna go take a sh Rick may have invented the best conversation segue ever, but I do have to wonder, do all the Ricks neglect bowel movements? I can only imagine having the urge to poop over and over again has to be a curse. Now, the release of said waste, I could do with that feeling over and over again. Plus, I'd be able to catch up on all my Philip DeFranco show in one day with that much time spent on the toilet. You killed him because you were jealous of him. That's pretty obvious from the haircuts. Judging someone by their haircut. Unless, of course, we're talking about Billy Ray Cyrus circa 1990s or Las Vegas Raiders owner Mark Davis. Then it's totally fair. I was just trying to protect my sister. I wanted you to have a normal life. Rick and Morty tries to have emotional stakes in a show where everyone's disposable and no one's redeemable cliche. Hold on, hold on. Yes. 
There are multiple already broken window panes for you to jump out of, balding Rick. Smartest mammal in the universe, my ass. Okay, I'm all about ease of access to go to the bathroom when in an armored outfit, but not protecting your buggy ball bag? You're in the middle of a gunfight? I'd rather get shot in the face than have a hole in my scrotum. Now I'm questioning if the insect who designed this armor had practicality in mind when creating these. Do the insects have extra lungs they breathe through in their nutsack? How much elasticity is in the ball bag? Can they be spun around their heads and thrown at the enemy like some sort of ball sack bolos to ensnare them? I'm not getting this out of my head for weeks, am I? Hey, who controls the fans, controls the galaxy! American idioms have a very weird influence on alien culture. My dad used to say he wore the pants in the household, but rarely did I see him with pants on. He was a tidy whities in a tank top kind of guy. So was I really the man of the house? Remember when phones only had one camera and it didn't feel like you were carrying around the Hubble telescope array? Yeah, good times. Nancy says they're drawing and quartering aliens in the school courtyard, and it technically counts as patriotism. Americans co-signing the brutal death and torture of a culture or species? You don't say. Nine more seasons until I get that dipping Szechuan sauce. Spoilers. Summer, next time we're hiding in a Kalorkian echo nest, can you do me a favor and turn your ringer off? Despite what the subtitles say, it's still not entirely clear what's being dealt with here. Was it a Kalorkian echo that had a nest, or was it a Kalorkian that had an echo nest? How am I supposed to update the fan wiki now, Dan? That's because losers look stuff up. Darn right, pink shirt girl in this episode of this television show. Darn right. To live is to risk it all. Otherwise, you're just an inert chunk of randomly assembled molecules drifting wherever the universe blows you. Show makes us question whether or not this statement was actually profound or just a setup to burn Jerry. Cool, just stay in the driveway. The killbots are live and I took you off the white list. Good thing you just randomly stopped right before walking into the garage then. Or bad thing. Yeah, let's go with bad thing. Back in the very first episode of Rick and Morty TV Sins, we made a joke about this towing company and finished by sinning that toes don't bend like that. We were then inundated in the comments with people saying that their toes do in fact bend like that. And I say, bullshit. I'm giving 10 sins to you toe scam liars. Seriously, if you can extend your big toe and still fully flex all four of your other toes to where the pads of the toe are touching the bottom of your foot, I'll give 20 sins back in the next Rick and Morty episode we send and name drop you for it. Just send the proof to Pixar It Didn't Happen at cinemasins.com for verification and absolutely not because I want to look at pictures of strangers' feet as far as you know. half open boxes and the mattress leaning up against the side secured only by this tall and unstable lamp. The sin is Jerry loading his truck like a Jerry. Wind salts. Can someone help me understand if butts are faces and faces are butts in this world? Then what part of the butt is butt face Morty watching the face butt porn with? And what orifice on the face butt do butt faces use to, you know what? I just decided I don't want to know any of this. Dang it. Quickly, please. This episode is not titled Mad Rick Morty Road. The exploding war boy on the back of their vehicle has little to no impact on them or the car, proving that even a show with an established plot device for replacing main characters can also be shameless in its use of plot armor. People that believe in climate change, but still don't give a shit. This stuff's so powerful, Morty. It makes Isotope 465 look like Isotope 317. This techno babble is so Star Trek TNG, it makes Doctor Who look like sliders. Your blood will be my lotion. Blood would be a terrible lotion. It dries up almost immediately, and then you walk around smelling like iron and looking like a giant scab. This creature with a horizontal hydraulic denture, mouth harmonica, nose face speaks lies. Is it really easier to eat human flesh than to just tell me why we're still here? No. <laughs> No matter how many times you watch these episodes, there's always that one joke that hits hard, and this is the one that did it for me. Uh, you mean the blood dome? Save it for the semantics dome, E.B. White. Ooh, burn. <laughs> I'm this close to giving another sin off for yet another hilarious bit, but then I realized that calling the blood dome the thunder dome isn't just a semantic difference. Blood is very different than thunder, although I do hide under the covers the moment I experience either of them. This device extracts and redistributes muscle memory. This MacGuffin has fired so ungracefully up the ass of this episode, I have to give it two sins, even though its penetration in the end will be quite enjoyable. Letting this bicep meat rot in the heat. And some chose to huddle near the boomy holes. Calling it your boomy hole. And letting someone huddle near it. For the vert vertisements on Billy Boards. Did the boomy booms blow up all your wordy word books? Summer would be furiosa at TV sins. Nipple suspenders as a fashion statement? Super cool. Nipple suspenders as your chosen blood dome uniform? F***ing liability, man. Good thing the lady in the water arm chose this moment to stop destroying everything in its vicinity the second Summer showed up, huh? This neck keeps pulsing more blood out of it, and honestly, sometimes I think the show forgets that disgusting things can be distracting things, and if they're not careful, I might not be paying close enough attention to catch the next fart joke. Oh, 
we'll be right back. Aside from the usual nonsense fourth wall breaking, this should also be sent for how it allows the show to fast forward through how Rick got out of this situation, why Summer sided with the Death Stalkers, and if Morty's monster arm got in some quick dealt work before it suddenly decided to drive him out here. Chopping wood one-handed. Wait, chopping wood left-handed? <laughs> Now I'm gonna whip you. Narrating your whipping is only acceptable if a problem comes along and you whip it good. What about the weird guys on leashes then? They're more like interns. This asshole claims to have little memory of the before four times, so this means that internships as a concept have survived the apocalypse. Actually, it makes perfect sense that something as soulless and evil would survive the end of the world, but still, f internships. Can I see? No one has seen my true face and lived. Scene does not contain a baby Yoda. A metal bucket is, on a certain level, a kind of mustache, in that it's a specific facial accessory. A mustache is not just a facial accessory. It's a growing and ever-changing part of you that requires care and nurturing, so it can one day become a full and prominent statement of your desire to never drink milk in public ever again. The thing I find most disconcerting about this whole scene is how all of them just sit there conversing with an entire meatball on their fork. I have so many questions, like, aren't you worried about the sauce dripping all over the place as you gesture? Are you planning on eating the entire meatball in one bite? Are you not including any spaghetti with the meatball? They are meant to be eaten together, you savages. And that's before we even get to your serving sizes. That plate of spaghetti is as big as your head. That's probably 3,000 calories worth of spaghetti there. And I'm not even counting the pureed egg yolk drink you've included. Dial it back, Summer, by 15% and increase dynamic movement by three. No matter how many times this show tries to explain away Beth being oblivious to all things Rick because of the issues with their relationship, she has also been established to be a very smart person. It only takes a moderately smart person, like myself, to see through this robotic family ruse. Plus, dynamic movement adjustments are always done in increments of five. Otherwise, what's the point? You millennials. Generationalizations. Please, slavery was a family business. That's his business? The flashback we saw earlier was of his men murdering the entire village. The writers think someone could be this bad at business and also have a taint washer. Uh, Armothy, can I steal you for a second? Armothy. Armothy. What about arm and fight? Or sleeve jobs? I mean, hand squish him. Anderson was right there. Maybe the lesson we've learned is that- I don't know if I get to do this with Rick and Morty, so skip? They did all this in three weeks. I mean, my neighbor started putting up a fence in his backyard three months ago, and he's still not done. Part of this is probably on my lazy neighbor, f***ing Bruce. But this is still a lot of infrastructure for 21 days. We were monsters. We didn't care about anything. I still don't. Yeah, except I'm the only one in this entire world that's still committed to that. Oh, ding, ding, ding. Ding, ding, ding. Three sins? Oh, I get it. You want me to send the marriage kills romance and results in conflict cliche. Fair enough. Here's your ding, ding, ding. No union built on running from your problems lasts more than five years. Seven tops. USA deniers. No! No. Unless my suffering is your nourishment. TV sins. I turned myself into a pickle, Morty! With the garage door open? I mean, it's possible Rick couldn't care less if people know he's a mad scientist, but I usually like a little privacy when I'm transforming my pickle. I'm Pickle Rick! Roll deal commercials. It's probably sin enough that this intro scene doesn't have an episode yet, but I'm just confused why each butt cheek would have a separate face when the face is the entire butt. Shouldn't the butt then be the entire face? And wouldn't this make the mouth the... Oh god, I've gone too far. Also, it's official. Rick and Morty needs to do a whole episode including all the stuff they didn't do from the intros and turn it into one episode. They're good at off-the-wall concepts, so time to make it happen, assholes. Stop digging for hidden layers and just be impressed. Rick and Morty fans in our comments section. Did you do this on purpose to get out of family counseling? He did, and it really makes me wonder why he didn't do something a lot less convoluted. Seems like he could have simply faked being sick, or made himself sick for real, and had an antidote hidden somewhere. Or thousands of other things he could have done to get out of therapy. We're going to get one of the most famous Rick and Morty episodes out of it, but while it's hard to complain, it's not hard to sin. Hey, hey Rick, why is there a syringe of mysterious fluid hanging directly over you? Morty's got a point here. Why would Rick set up some sort of Rube Goldbergian syringe solution in full view of everyone? I would think someone smart enough to become an actual pickle would also be smart enough to hide whatever creative way they found to not be a pickle anymore. For instance, conjuring a me-seeks and asking them to hide until everyone leaves and then administer the antidote for one possible solution. Beth conveniently leaves the garage door open so that Pickle Rick can get into his adventure. This goes on for some time. It was a bright-ass sunny day with no cloud in sight. Then the clouds with the flooding rain came out of nowhere to bail Rick out. I'm pretty sure it only rains long enough for Rick to get to the next phase of the story, making this the biggest deus ex machina rain since Noah, when God killed all of Noah's arch nemeses. 
Also, floods don't happen this fast, and unless the water is coming directly from the garage, this driveway wouldn't accumulate water at any depth at all. Pickle Rick is apparently holding his breath underwater, so can we talk anatomical morphing? Does this mean this pickle has respiratory, circulatory, and neurological systems? And if so, isn't it more of a pickle-shaped human than an actual human turned into a pickle? Yes! How did he say yes so clearly if he's tonguing a roach's brain nonstop to make it move? Also, most scientists think that arthropods actually have a distributed intelligence, which means their motion is controlled at multiple points of the body, meaning this cerebral lingus shouldn't really be doing all that much at all. It's nobody's choice to be here, you knobs. The family was told to get counseling by your principal. Sounds like the principal was a co-writer on this script, considering the unusual request for the entire family to get counseling. Even though it's not the family that was huffing pottery glaze in the art room. As far as my research shows, pottery glaze does not contain any brain-altering substances. Oh, you sweet summer child. How long have you all been eating poop? Yeah, I bet when you have fond memories of the Pickle Rick episode, you don't remember the Morty desk peeing incident, or the teacher that eats poop, do ya? This rat trap includes a weight, wall screws, and bolts, and a tied-off rubber band secured at twice a pickle's height. How the hell could Rick build this at his current pickle size, and with a distinct lack of opposable thumbs? This Rick builds complex machinery quickly with no hands or tools. It's going to be a common thing, isn't it? Fine, let's add five sins for this plot forwarding nonsense and move on. Good thing the city installed these sewer covers to give way with such great sense of dramatic timing. I know this is one of those things where you're not supposed to think very deeply into it and just accept that Rick, who is a pickle, screwed rat arms and legs onto himself and now has the agility of Tony Jaw as he rampages through this rat horde. But if rat anatomy is this amazing, I find it hard to believe they wouldn't rule the world, or at the very least have complete control of the New York City subway. Also, don't get me wrong, going all John Rick Chapter 3 Pickle Bellum on these rats is pure amazingness. But unless he's broken the law of conservation of mass, him making this machine appear complete with seemingly unlimited ammo out of absolutely nothing can suck my gherkin. Well, Dr. Wong, by the way racist name... Calling things racist that aren't even racist at all. You have any self-awareness? God. You were special to rats. Now they're dead. I guess it was me you should have impressed. I feel like somewhere this episode should get a sit-off for its goofy premise paying off and... I'll do it here. I mean to be a nitpicky bastard, but what the f*** is up with all these vents in this hallway? And room 280 is directly across the hallway from room 290? Who in the f toilet is this? How the f*** did Rick get this f***ing deep into the middle of nowhere from that sewer he was in? Hi, um, can you, uh, uh, please let me out? Can't Rick just find a way out on his own? He's been using the vents to get around, and he has more resources than when he was down in the sewers. And down there, he could build a jetpack and a whole complicated rat part assembly machine. Some of my men are calling you Solenia. The Pickle Man, an old wives' tale. He crawls from bowls of cold soup to steal the dreams of wasteful children. This old wives' tale is about as stupid as the first wives' club. A pickle as some sort of waste-not-want-not boogeyman? I know Russia's f***ed up, guys, but they can be way more creative and f***ed up than that. This Russian syndicate must shop for office supplies at the same company as John Wick and Ledger's Joker, because these industrial strength pencils are somehow nailing someone to a wall and impaling entire human shoulders. My pencil breaks when I press too hard while dotting the eye and Kendrick with a little heart. What do you think is in the syringe bath? You're the one that costs $200 an hour, you tell me. Okay, so this mandatory counseling costs $200? I can barely even see the family agreeing to this counseling, much less paying $200 an hour. Oh my god! Oh! Th 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 there's pictures of people eating poop in there! The alternate title of this episode was clearly Fecal Rick. As little that's left of these desks, I'm questioning their ability to support a full Van Damme in their current condition. How is Rick flying this chopper without being able to reach the anti-torque pedal and other important helicoptery things? What is this, some kind of suicide squad? I have no doubt that you would be bored senseless by therapy. The same way I'm bored when I brush my teeth and wipe my ass. Who has ever been wiping their ass and said to themselves, God damn, this is boring. It's not like it's supposed to be fun. Feels like this is just another way for the episode to wallow in shit again. She huffed enamel, and we never even talked about it. Uh, yeah, you did. It's what led to Summer saying, I am mad that I can't huff enamel without people assuming it's because my family sucks. Saying she'd prefer people to just think she likes to get high. It was discussed. A stringed instrument would be completely muted by crushed corpses attached to its strings, even in the key of B-flat. Now, for the E-splat! <laughs> Jaguar! Is Jaguar, um, gonna untie Rick and Morty? 
Don't let any of those things get away, Morty. And be sure to keep the garage door open while these things scurry about. That seems to propel a lot of our plots. Also, is this a garden hose hanging on the side of the Smith house? That thing is huge. That is the girthiest yard hose ever to hose a yard. Can we call it Dirt Diggler? I, Morty Smith, invoke my right to choose one in every ten Rick and Morty God. adventures. So it's true, Rick and Morty have adventures that are not televised, so it's possible we haven't seen other adventures chosen by Morty. But the episode Me Seeks and Destroy seemingly established that Morty would choose at least one adventure in every ten episode season. When Morty angled to be in charge of every third adventure, and Rick casually rebutted him off with every tent. This self-aware show was surely referring to the number of episodes in a season. I think they just forgot this was a thing until now. This time travel box hasn't paid off, and I'm calling it. It's been long enough. I want some time travel shenanigans, damn it. This container has been teasing me since episode one, and my flux is at full capacitor. They did a whole Vindicators without us. Bunch of them got killed, too. So Morty is an unabashed Vindicators fan, and while it makes sense that they would do an adventure without Rick and Morty, it seems like he would have figured that out already, since he's such a huge fan of them and all. Wouldn't he have various news feeds set up to follow whatever the Vindicators were doing even when they weren't assembled? Yikes. Yeah, things did feel less diverse in there. Sure, there's a white guy, but there's also a woman who is apparently a solar system, a person made of ants, a robot crocodile, and a ghost train conductor of color. What the hell is Rick even talking about? I'll buy that Supernova and Vance can fly down from the jet. And I guess maybe million ants can somehow float down with Morty in tow, but how do Alan Rails and Crocubot even come close to surviving the impact of that height? Are you all right? Yes. I only lost 400 ants. Million ants is made up of a million ants. This many bullet holes would have caused the slaughter of well into the tens of thousands. My queen is laying more. I am back to one million ants. Literal Ant-Man could have had any kind of biology and it would make sense, I suppose. I mean, this guy's made up of ants. But don't, don't ants have to go through the larvae and pupae stages before developing into full-blown ants? This whole process lasts a month at least. So even if your queen could somehow spit them out that fast, your chronology needs some work. Jeez, Supernova. I mean, there's unrealistic body image, and then there is a toilet paper roll balancing two cantaloupes while sitting on top of the Great Pumpkin. Is your superpower transmitting body dysmorphia? We're taking fire from an automated turret. Can you bring it offline? Seems like they wouldn't need Rick to do this, since many of the superheroes have powers that could easily destroy the turret on their own. But this episode is a parody of superhero movies, so maybe that's the point. I'm sending it anyway, because I won't feel right in the morning if I don't. Okay, so the turrets shoot the decoy and it absorbs the bullets. But why do they stop shooting once the decoy goes back into the box? These guns clearly have more bullets left because they end up blowing themselves up after Rick's hilariously complicated device locks them down. Do it in three minutes or you'll <coughs> die. So at what point does Rick transition from hilarious nihilistic asshole to legitimate supervillain? Has he always been the villain of the show? Look, that's fine if that's the case. I'm just saying at some point we need some sort of moral foundation here, right? This is triggering me. I need space. Does anyone even want to just glance at the board and maybe just do the easy matching game? I'm as stubborn and prideful as the next guy, but if my life's on the line, I'm at least going to check out the difficulty level before I get all flustered. Look, I know the drunk Rick set all this up and all of this is surprising to him too, but sober Rick doesn't care one bit about these assholes. So why is he all horrified? fight about fans. The Rick we know and love would be stoic about this and be ready with a sarcastic quip. Give me one reason why I shouldn't crush your windpipe. Because my epidermis is laced with a nanofiber defense mesh. Okay, that's awesome. But when he grabbed your neck, your eyeball went to bloodshot, which means your defense mesh wasn't working when he first grabbed you. It appears to only exist for this joke. Of course, we're going to keep our eye on that clock. And now it appears to be under a minute, even though only one minute has passed since the three minutes started. This is like the Friends Apartment quiz all over again, except Rick's more likable than Ross. But they don't... Pick the location you'll... you'll never hear them even mention. Oh, I know this. Dude, this game doesn't even have a timer. Why the rush? Even drunk, Pickled Rick is a super genius, but he's just one super genius, right? How does one person build this entire fully automated giant instructional screen and an interactive holographic display in one drunken night? Drunk version of me is probably so supportive of Israel. He wants what's best for it and- Hey man, I'm not touching this. That's a funny reply, but does Million Ants know the geopolitical complexity of issues concerning Israel to the point that he knows it's a touchy subject? Let's say you have to hit five three-pointers in five minutes or, I don't know, the whole place, the whole planet will get blown up with a neutrino bomb. Rick clearly recorded his audio first, making it up as he went, and then had to enact his ramblings into the real world. Which is kind of brilliant, considering that's basically how this show seems to be created. So this is either a sin for Rick standing in as the proxy for the writer's laziness, or a sin for being brilliant enough to get away with it. Either way. I'll disarm the drunkenly improvised neutrino bomb. Morty, how many of these- Too many, Rick! Too many! Okay, so he's disarmed a few of these bombs. But why the hell is he all of a sudden going full Hurt Locker, when we all know non-drunk Rick is the one that will eventually take care of this? Is there something set up on this basketball court that detects the 
the distance from which these guys shoot the basket? Because it seems like they could just shoot layups and everything rigged up here wouldn't know the difference. I mean, if it allows Supernova to cheat the three-pointers like this, then there's nothing stopping them from taking the easiest shot possible. Because when you're an asshole, it doesn't matter how right you are, nobody wants to give you the satisfaction. Thing overheard at TV Sin's team-building retreat somehow makes it into a Rick and Morty script. Wouldn't Rick's nanofiber defense mesh easily be able to break these handcuffs? So Morty gets on the platform and it works, but we find out that Drunk Rick was thinking of Noob Noob as the answer to this question. And while this game might just be total bull and that's exactly the point of it all, this whole thing is so detailed you'd think if Drunk Rick was really thinking about Noob Noob, he'd have made sure the platform required Noob Noob. Every single puzzle Rick set up was accompanied by a video, and every single one of these recordings took place in his garage. And while he may not have had every game plan, he clearly had the last game plan because he had already cut out the rainbow background for the last video message. But that last one was recorded somewhere in the cave they're currently in. So why did he wait to do this one here when he did all the other videos in his garage? You were always the romantic, which is why you can't leave either. So Supernova is a full-blown psychopath now? Just like that. Was there any sign of this over her years of service? This is a sin for the Vindicator's HR department, if nothing else. I'm going to enjoy this. And let's, and let's give, give a, a huge, huge thanks, thanks to Rick Sanchez. Sanchez. Wouldn't all the people up here have seen Supernova doing all the evil <laughs> she did, including killing million ants while they took the ride on the elevator? You mean nobody was looking down during that whole thing? And what about the superheroes? Nobody looked up and saw tons of people up there having a party? And for, for booking, booking one, one of the, of the hottest, hottest talents, talents out there, Logic! Uh, I mean, there's logic problems, and then there's logic problems. Apparently this episode has both. Does Jerry not grow mustache stubble? Also wearing tidy off whiteies. The show's hitting the sad sack Jerry punching bag hard in this opening, even insinuating he flosses while on the toilet. But in what world does someone with Jerry's personality traits even floss at all? Oh, I couldn't give a shit about washing my undies in the sink, but gotta take care of my teeth tweeners. Rick and Jerry episode! Breaking the fourth wall to advertise your episode shortcomings. Oversaturating the plumbus market. What did you think it was? An execution. Jeez, you really do need a win. Is it really that far-fetched though? The truth is the Rick we've been shown in this show is probably more likely to execute Jerry or manufacture a new one entirely rather than waste his time trying to give him a win. Huh. This seems kind of fancy. Jerry, for all you know, this is the equivalent of an alien truck stop. You have no frame of reference. Rick would be a master convincer at TV Sins. The resort's covered in an immortality field. You can't die here. That's the gimmick. I have questions and thoughts aplenty about the functionality, practicality, and sustainability of an immortality field. Far too many to contain in the parameters of this one sin, so I'm going to sprinkle them in whenever I feel there's a lull in the cinnable. But first off, both Rick and his buddy seem to be in pain when they're harpooned and glassed. Immortality should really not be so appealing when you can still feel the pain of death. Rich a-holes are rich a-holes. They all pay top dollar to come here and enjoy a consequence-free vacation. Stealing your idea from Westworld. The book. Or the old movie. But not the new show, which came out later. So then we'd send that for stealing from this. This job's complicated. Mom! Do you think I'm hot? This entire B-plot is dangerously skippable, so I'll use it instead to untable my immortality field doctoral thesis. Next up is the fact that this isn't technically an immortality field. It's a resurrection and regeneration field. An immortality field would prevent death from occurring in the first place and allow you to survive your injuries regardless of severity, which would make this a f***ing horror escape of a resort where you never die but have to continuously feel the pain of any injury or mishap that befalls you. Is that a... Hoof collage? It's perfectly legal if that's what you're wondering. Nope. I was just wondering why you're leaving your wine glass directly under the disembodied hoof sculpture. Do you want hoof and mouth disease? Because this may or may not be how you get hoof and mouth disease. Or could it be her massive stripper titties? In my <clears throat> limited amount of research, I can confirm there is no specific shape or size of titty required to be a stripper. Yeah, of course he likes it. Look at him. Motherfucker got two heads and three trunks. That's by cranial triproboscist. Between the first whirly and the third durly, the ride dips just outside the immortality field. Well, that's just terrible theme park design. I don't want to judge an alien race by its appearance, but I do want to know more about the genetic quirks of this species. For example, why does this individual have nipples when the others do not? And why do they have one bubblegum stalk and yet our bigger friend here has two? And why are they bumpy when the smaller chaps are perfectly smooth? You can't give me another new alien race without the proper information to fill out my Rick and Morta decks. If she's this big and the machine's still running, how is she A, alive, and B, not immediately popping Morty like a tomato sauce balloon the second he tries to squeeze through there? There are some major issues between you and Beth that have been there since you guys met. This is what apparently tips Jerry over the edge into patricide-in-law. 
This, an insightful statement that's likely based on truth as opposed to one of the many careless or hateful things that Rick has done? What's worse is that the show never has a problem making Rick out to be the asshole, so why not use this as an opportunity to show him really tormenting Jerry and Jerry finally breaking? What else could reverse possibly mean? In fairness to Beth, this is a terrible setting description. The setting should have clearly been called Inside Out, which still would be incorrect considering basically all that happens is the skin inverts but somehow leaves the eyes and mouth intact. Man, this is gonna be awesome. Rick doesn't find it at all suspicious that despite the huge line of people waiting behind him, this card is allowed to leave completely empty, other than the two clearly assassiny looking assassins in the back that are inexplicably being allowed to stay on despite having already partaken in the coaster. Also, how did the assassins know that this card was the card that Rick and Jerry were gonna be on? And how could they guarantee that Rick and Jerry were gonna be at the front of the line? <laughs> Did Jerry just lift up the lap bar mid-ride? That should not be possible. I know this is an animated show, but I've had literal nightmares about this exact scenario and I need to know that this should not be possible. The assassin inexplicably waits until Rick and Jerry have almost re-entered the resurrection and restoration field. I don't even think they have a line of sight now. Instead of activating a bomb, I just assumed this button was some sort of quick release mechanism for Rick's lab coat. And what's concerning about this is I didn't even question how ineffective and ridiculous that would be. My brain just said, yeah, that tracks. And I am not okay with how this show is reshaping my logic center. Look, I've never managed a resort with a resurrection and restoration field, but if I did, I don't think I'd put the power source to said field where it was so open to being damaged. I mean, look at all this rock. Why not bury that shit way underground? Rick and Jerry survive this. And you might think that's silly, but the whole episode is about a place with a resurrection and restoration field. And when you're going to have your character survive a direct collision with a mountain and a rocketing wheel of death, your supposed immortality field becomes about as important as the lowest button on a button-down shirt. I mean, it's there for a purpose, but does it really change much? Who do you think had more taken from them when you shot 20 cc's of liquid dream killer into my daughter? <laughs> I f***ing love the writers of this show. She was Rick's daughter, Jerry. She had options. Oof. <laughs> the monster stopped eating him for a second to pile on and say oof. Yeah, yeah, two sin removals in a row because the random forest monster said oof. I mean, balls, hilarious, I get it, but he could just duck down in the pouch a bit, right? Also, the creature that evolved to carry its young within punching distance of its gonads would like a quick conversation with Darwin, please. Kissing Rick's ass isn't going to help keep him around, Mom but it will help you lose everyone else. Chapter 47 on my thesis, challenging the r, &R Resort, a title that the owners really dropped the ball on by not using, now that I think about it, is wondering if laws regarding murder and assault don't apply here. I mean, you're still going through the mental and physical trauma of being attacked and assaulted, so are there just no repercussions because there's no lasting physical damage? Like I lost Summer. Hey. You haven't lost her yet. No, I definitely did. She's gone. There is not a chance Summer would have been able to sneak away. She's too big to miss, would shake the ground when she walked, and would be raining garage debris. It's a synaptic dampener that blocks violent tendencies and controversial thought. I want cookies and a 90-minute cut of Avatar. <laughs> this show cuts so deep. I f***ing love it. But unfortunately, I'm dangerously close to maxing out my sin removals for the season, so I'll just have to send the cookie monster shade instead. Wait, I know where she is! Of course you do. How else would we wrap up two storylines in the next five minutes? Ethan and Summer were supposed to go camping, and then he dumped Summer. The next book in my r, &R Field series will be dedicated to organized crime. Why isn't this resort being overrun with space mobsters and criminals that can either use it as a place to torture their enemies or as a hideout where they can't be hurt by the authorities? Using it as a theme park is wildly undervaluing its potential. Live out the rest of your days in denial of your vagina fantasies. It was a one-time thought that everyone has! I mean, other than the people that already have a vagina. Right? Rick and Morty episode steals the best scene from Everything Everywhere all at once and the dumbest scene from Doctor Strange 2 five years before either of them came out and don't act like that is impossible in a show like this. Oh God, I feel like our souls were united and we're all one with eternity. Still a better explanation than anything I've heard defending the ending of Interstellar. <laughs> And the final series of volumes will be spent positing that the r, &R Resort should be swamped by the entire damn universe. This is a place where you not only can't be permanently killed, but it reverses the thing that killed you. So anyone with a spaceship and a terminal illness can come here, die, and be cured of anything that was killing them. This resort should be the seat of power for the entire damn multiverse. I know giant, inside-out, kaigu versions of Summer and Beth are in this scene, but the real monster here is Morty who uses his bare thumb to pat down this melted marshmallow. Directly touching the marshmallow is a surefire way to ruin any shot you have at not sticking directly to everything you come in contact with for the rest of the evening. Show takes 21 minutes and 13 seconds to actually Rick and Morty. 
I heard you broke up with Brad. Who are you gonna date now that you can date anyone? Why is this an immediate question to ask someone that just broke up? I understand that they're keenly curious about body stuff as evidenced in the following line. Penis in the foreskin kind of love. So yeah, go figure out what you enjoy, I guess. But can we just let people take a longer than 12 second break between the end of one relationship and questions about the next? You can be single is what I'm saying. This highly questionable school art that is inspiring a love of microscopes, trophies, open flames, hookah, and magnetic floating chalices. I'm confused about my career path by simply glancing at it. Let's go, in and out, 20 minutes adventure. Title of my overambitious sex tape? In this shot, the fleet isn't concentrating their firepower on one location, but when we zoom in, the firepower seems to be aimed at this Volva's mass. Don't get me wrong, one should always concentrate on the Volva's mass, but be consistent. Why is their skin flapping around as the wind is pushing it back from the ship's trajectory? I get that G-forces do crazy things to your face, but for this amount of gum flappage, surely they'd have to be taking some bizarre route out of here and not the straight line that we see in this shot. <laughs> oh, <f> oh, <laughs> I can't do this anymore! Audio from the TV Sins writer's room after sending Game of Thrones final season somehow makes it into the episode. This was insane! That was pure luck! I was not in control of that situation at all! <laughs> Followed by Jeremy and Chris's reaction to the birth of CinemaSins also making its way into a Rick and Morty episode. Not closing all of your eyes when receiving a massage. You were right. Best day spa in the galaxy. Enjoying whatever this is with your grandfather. These things are just doing what they do in the wild. They love swallowing stressed out creatures for 20 minutes and then puking them up. I think cats feel this way about birds. Like it's their responsibility to end their stressful birdie lives, consume them, and then vomit them on my pillow at 3 a.m. as if it does anyone a favor. So this sin is for the unexpected visual memory barrage of my long-gone Audubon-obsessed cat, Oliver. F***ing Oliver. My whole body's like a baby's ass. Diapered and rashy? That makes no f***ing sense. Try swallowing the giant ball of snot that's dangling around in the back of your throat. It's disgusting. Says the man who, for 90% of his day, has more bodily fluids on his face than Jabba the Hutt's gynecologist. It's nice of you to let me off the hook. It's still unacceptable behavior, and I do regret it. Rick is being extra nice because he's had all of his toxins removed, but that would seem to overlook that some of the most toxic people you will ever meet will carry themselves with a kind word and a smile. Yeah, take that. You came here for sex tape jokes and left with life facts, suckers. I'm real proud to be your grandpa, Morty. I guess this sin is on me for enjoying this wholesome moment while also realizing that the toxic elements of Rick and Morty are ripped from their consciousness. Do... do I prefer this show? Am I a... a sap trained by television to feel better when everyone gets along like puppets? Well, you were flapping your parasitic turd holster! Not specifying what the turd holster is, precisely. So, I'm now unsure how to use it in situations requiring insult slinging. I discovered the toxic equivalent of electricity, Morty. <laughs> I love the idea that there's a toxic version of electricity, even if it doesn't make any sense. I mean, would lightning just deliberately pick out the nicest people to strike? Would a power surge wait until you've nearly finished a big project to short out your computer and then do exactly the same thing to your brand new computer just to f*** with you? Wait, toxic electricity may already be a thing. Now, who can tell me the common denominator of these two fractions? You don't know or you're just bored. False dichotomies. With the kids' clothing variety as your only clue, you'll never discover the mystery of the current weather pattern in the neighborhood. If we're all bored over here, wouldn't the common denominator be you? We learned that it's only the character traits the individual believes are toxic that have been removed, but I still struggle to believe that Morty doesn't think being a back-talking smartass to his teacher doesn't fall into the realm of toxicity. I do, however, know that I have a pretty bad case of haven't taken you to dinner-itis. This works. Oh, sh**. The item on the wall wasn't art at all, it was an actual trophy case? Well, in that case, I will remove a sin, because I called it art. And then add a sin back, because it looks like the rest of the trophy case is further down the hallway, but we saw much more of it from a different angle earlier. I think I know what to do. Morty! Holy sh**. What was that foam made out of that it made it so easy for Morty to snap it in half? Oh. I'll have a water. But, but you already have wine. So wouldn't the drink order have already been taken? Or is that the previous table's wine? But why is there wine at the empty tables? What is this restaurant? Look, this is Rick and Morty land, so I'm gonna gloss over the fact that these two 14 year olds are having a first date at this fancy restaurant instead of a f***ing arcade or something. But I refuse to believe that this teenager would leave the house with little to no battery on their phone. That is a step too far, people. Hey Rick, 
Are you familiar with Benoit technology? The assholes behind Rick and Morty continue to make me drop the ball when it comes to resisting the urge to fall into the annals of the internet just for the sake of making sure I understand the whole joke they're making. They're all the bad parts of us, which by the way includes our dishonesty. But dishonesty can have positive uses though. An abundance of honesty can lead to feeling like you have to fill in the comment sections of the internet with all the reasons you hate something, instead of letting people enjoy the things they love. You know, just as a totally random example. No! Is it wrong if I think this is kind of hot? Watching an elder person force a younger person to toxify themselves in a garage experiment? Has Rick and Morty asked us to contemplate morals a bit too far this time? Eh, probably. Uh, Did I ask for this, huh? Uh, Did I? Uh, Assessing threat to groin. What uses a defensive groin laser if it only deploys after multiple hits to the vegetables have been received? Look, either this doorframe is made of cardboard or Rick's body is made of titanium. And yes, in this world, either could be true. But if I stopped sending stuff because it could be true, these Rick and Morty videos would be about five seconds long. Carpet so weak it tears by hand. Or hands so strong they tear carpet. Either way, it's a sin. Taping the horse head to the exterior of the frame rather than opening up the frame to subtly attach it to the photo directly. It's pretty disgusting, so you'll have to believe me when I say they forgot to put Rick's dismembered and eviscerated body in this panel. The monster stripping a spine tube thing out of the center of the floor with no Rick, and then suddenly there's a Rick. <laughs> the random bowl of fruit on the bottom of the table survives this. What did the booger version of you mean when he said he was going to make the whole world toxic? Oh, I'm sure he just left that as a clue so Rick would know where to find him once he figures out how to recombine them both into one being. Villains are super helpful like that. It must be by the individual's own definition of toxicity. The best thing about this episode is that it doesn't just assume that all is well once the things that you believe are toxic about you have been removed. We can all be toxic in ways that we're totally unaware of, and it all comes down to perspective. Damn you, Rick and Morty, for once again having more self-awareness and insight than any cartoon about a belching scientist has any right to be. This moon tower, Morty, <coughs> is the perfect height and metallic composition for the <coughs> amplification and beaming of toxic energies. Convenient tower fitting the exact requirements of the villain's plan is very convenient. Kids. This stock is a beautiful redhead, recently single, not looking to date, but ready to fall in love. Creators of the show went to the extra effort of animating this apple, in case this Jordan Belmort impression didn't quite hit all the asshole notes on its own. Is this organic? Mm. Yes, proclaiming the organicness of your food is pointless, but it isn't Morty chopping this carrot while neither moving the knife onto the carrot or the carrot into the knife levels of pointless. Hey, did you ever want to hold a Terry fold? Thinking that playing a whimsical song will make me hang around for the entirety of the crit. Wait, what the hell is a Terry fold? Why does it make me think of dinosaurs? Is this like a sexy dinosaurs song? How did dinosaurs have sex? <laughs> I suppose carefully is the obvious answer. Wait, is that the end of the credits? Damn it! All right, Morty, you ready for our adventure to the lost city of Atlantis? Rick and Morty not being complete assholes to each other is a pretty clear indicator that we won't be going to Atlantis. And I get that's the point of the episode, but it doesn't make me any less upset that the episode does not contain an adventure to the lost city of Atlantis. Also, we're three seasons in and still no one's picked up this f***ing sock. We're going from reality to reality, asking Ricks to contribute. Charity canvassing. Chanvassing? Hey, the Brits and the Aussies went with charity muggers and then a shortened version of that. So now there's been bad word choices on three continents. You're pitching the policeman's ball to a black teenager here. The smartest man in the universe being aware of the complex and difficult relationship racial and ethnic minorities have with the police, but choosing to use the topic as fodder for his jokes as opposed to actually doing something about it. You don't have to be a dick. I think you know that's not true. When Rick stop being polite and start getting real. We wouldn't dare play the music, but the sin, as always, is Joe Walsh. Eating sardines while driving. Or pretty much ever. Also, drinking and driving. Citadel Morning News. News about the Citadel in the morning. Pretty self-explanatory. When you over-explain things to the different versions of yourself as if you're the asshole. And before you say, what about the Mortys? You and I both know they'll never stop playing with their remote long enough to watch the news. 60 iterations off the central finite curve, there's a Rick that works more with wood than polarity plating. The subtitles on my version say this narrator's Sam Elliott when it's actually Jeff B. Davis doing an impression of Sam Elliott. Now whether that's a mistake or a joke, I'm giving it a sin for making me take the time to figure it out. But also, Jeff B. Davis absolutely nails this Sam Elliott impression. And the chemical that makes his brain secrete goes into every simple Rick, simple wafers, wafer cookie. Brain secretion wafer cookies are my least favorite secretion wafer cookies. Come home to the impossible flavor of your own completion. Tagline of my sex tape? The arrow on the this guy needs a plumbus sign is not making it clear as to exactly who needs the plumbus. I love being your 
their new farty. Kids, having an entire factory that only makes wafer cookies. Sure, a factory could put out just one product, but fucking wafer cookies? How is there a big enough market for those? K83, affectionately known as Cool Rick. K83 doesn't pronounce his name Cool Rick. Just four normal Mortys. Normal? Put it in your blog. Shop owner Morty is suddenly clever enough to make this comeback when a moment ago he wasn't clever enough to give Training Day Rick and Morty any information about the robbery beyond saying they looked like Mortys. The Morty Town Locos! Making your gang name sound Hispanic by adding the word logos to it is like the social science equivalent of adding the word quantum to things to make them more sciency. More lasers. Agreed. How would you solve the Citadel's financial crisis? For a show as consistently outside the box as this one, it's surprising they went with a boilerplate financial crisis as a problem facing the Citadel. I mean, at least give us a financial time crisis. Can we fact check this, please? <laughs> juggling would have been enough, but this one's for attempting to fact check a juggling metaphor. When they dismissed class, everyone but these four just walked out of the room and presumably out of the building using the front door. So why couldn't these four do the same? I see it in our factories, where Ricks work for a fraction of their boss's salary, even though they're identical and have the same IQ. If they all have the same IQ, then why aren't there robot servants doing all the work and thousands of Ricks just sitting around drinking margaritas? Shonies. What else would I send here? Everything else about this scene is perfectly normal. This screen in the back shows all the Ricks running for office and their percentage in the polls, which equals 100. But where's the Morty date and his percentage? Even if he has 0% at this point, he should still be on this screen since he was taking part in the debate. I believe the sin here is Rickscrimination. You gonna lick my balls or what? <laughs> Grandson, you keep me peeling squab squams and slipping nib nibs, I'll lick whatever ain't nailed down. Well, there's just a lot of shit here I'm just gonna ignore for my own sanity and move straight to sinning Rick for Lickscrimination against things that are nailed down. Bandaging your wound on the outside of your clothes. Hey, y'all get the hell away from my damn mega fruit! Mega fruit seeds didn't go up a button this episode. I bet the wishing portal leads to a reality where they're, we're all, where it's a bunch of French toast with boobies. Does the French toast have boobies or are the boobies on the side? I need to know. Slick, why do you have to be so dramatic? Episode has a slick Morty, but no slick Rick. I thought I was left-handed Morty. Then you should use your left hand to eat more vegetables. Lizard Morty would be TV sins Morty at, well, TV sins. Associating food with a hard Rick is not a health code violation in this scene. One dance for 10, two for 25. For a moment, I was worried about shaming autosexuality here, but the longer I spend with this scene, the more certain I become that this is something else entirely. Oh, I want to be a regular kid. Oh, I want to go to school and throw balls around and masturbate. Joe wants me to believe those last two aren't one in the same. We got your portal gun. After he drops the shield, they make a little baby portal to give him the gun. So while he's distracted and the shield was still down, couldn't they have opened multiple portals in the flavor core and surrounded him? A portal to the blender dimension? The one line pitch responsible for Event Horizon. The factory made cookies, flavored him with lies. Splenda. You have to give up something really important. For me, that's my panini maker. I wish for a million sandwiches. And yes, I see the irony. Not requesting these sandwiches at a specific interval so they don't arrive all at once and spoil. I wish anything about this life would change. The show does the wildest, most nonsensical bullshit and somehow swings it back around to make you feel something cliche. Now is the time for action. Sure, launching the bodies out into space gives us an idea of the devastation evil Morty can inflict, but it makes little sense in terms of disposal, especially when you've already shown us the giant garbage portal that seems much more suited to the job. Still not curious about what might have happened at that crazy Citadel place? <laughs> not at all, Morty. That place will never have any bearing over our lives ever again. Writers, let the audience know that nothing in this show is sacred, and they'll do whatever they please whenever they want, and that includes bringing the Citadel back probably somewhere around the 500th season. Oh jeez, Rick! Oh jeez, jeez! Oh jeez, oh man! Oh jeez! Hey! Oh jeez, man! I hear that! Oh jeez! But oh jeez! Oh jeez, man! Oh jeez! Come on! Oh jeez! Oh jeez, Rick! Oh man! Oh jeez! Oh, oh. Rick and Morty run away from the Edward without scissor hands towards the stairs, but then somehow wind up on these set of stairs instead of the ones on the original trajectory. This could be possible, of course, but the show doesn't animate them jumping or rocketing over there, which would have been a lot of fun to see. Also, has this alien planet just randomly heard of MC Escher, or do they just have their own MC Escher? I'm gonna need to walk up a few more impossible staircases to figure this one out. Ah! Well, that's what you get for building your Escher Palace over a space vortex. Morty, let's watch some interdimensional cable. Remember how we used to do that? I do. And if you want to remember, I will show you these two examples of videos you could watch that do not benefit me in any way. I'm just looking out for you. I can't go on. I can't go on like this with the true tortoise shit in my head. I was just thinking this the last time I let a tortoise shit on my head. Wait. 
This, Morty, is my archive of all the experiences you've begged me to remove from your life, lest you go insane. I call them Morty's Mind Blowers. Seems like an impressive amount when you see them all, but how many of them are just simply about Morty forgetting the Mind Blowers room exists? Because Rick would have to erase that memory every time as well, right? Also, Morty's memory manipulation would be more accurate, but Rick is taking the marketing approach here to keep this intriguing. Like calling Botox a rejuvenating enhancement rather than paralyzing injection jabs. Or a piece of shit house a unique canvas ready for creative solutions. This labeling system that appears to depend on the stickiness of the tape, certainly Rick has the ability to do better than this. Okay, so Rick doesn't give a shit, but why then label it all? Never seen signs of a regular dude, as you describe him, hanging out up there. But Rick does have the technology to take the memory from Morty at this point, so why not look in at Morty's memory and see what he did to confirm the person on the moon or tease Morty endlessly for the rest of his life? Putting brown gravy on mashed potatoes, or really just putting brown gravy on anything. Morty's at least 11 or 12, right? Why are they still learning simple math like 18 plus 10 at his age? Morty took a picture in printable clarity at night? Wait, Morty printed pictures for proof? This is insane. Who prints pictures? Oh my god, what have I done? How did this memory not convince Morty that he'd actually seen a man on the moon? His memory is clear at the beginning, and this is obviously a man and not a smudge. Also, this is the same flag on the moon as in the yard. There is no other conclusion to draw from this memory except Morty was correct about the man on the moon. They don't all have titles, though. It's not a Simpsons Halloween special. More like a clip show made of clips you never saw. These aren't clips that Morty never saw. These are clips that Morty can't remember, but he definitely saw them at some point or they wouldn't exist. The Collector comes to peek into their habitat and spots Rick disassembling a television. Wouldn't this be somewhat alarming? Why would the Collector allow the specimens to take apart their environment? Oh, the schematics specify a second, smaller pilot. I mean, they really specify smaller. They have to be exactly five foot three. But why? Morty normally just sits in normal sized seats. What would his height have to do with anything in regards to the schematics? And Rick's making it pretty obvious these idiots are being set up to be stuck in an alien human zoo. How come I was able to see those other people's memories? I, I wouldn't have been around for that. Morty would be nootropic at TV sins. This very confusing piece of paper that came from an alien but is written in English. Now maybe the paper is designed to translate to be legible to whoever reads it, but then why wouldn't it be written properly with the name capitalized in a period after warrior? Having two glasses of whatever this is, while also having a glass of whatever this is. Is that orange juice? Oh, great. Now I'm thinking about OJ with Mexican food, and you can take that flavor combo straight to hell, Rick and Morty. I'm gonna go take a quick shit. So Rick goes to the bathroom and walks away down the hallway. I thought that was odd, because I assumed the bathroom doors were here. Then the shot cuts to Floop, and over his shoulder, the sign says the bathrooms are the opposite direction from where Rick went. However, on the wide shot, the arrow is pointed in the other direction, and we're left with nothing but assumptions about where Rick actually went to take a shit. And honestly, this is probably the most haunting part of the episode. All right, so you want to do this here or outside? I'm not privy to all the Don Cuco establishment rules, but I'm going to go out on a limb and assume they don't approve of alien murder in their restaurant during normal operation hours. In the meantime, enjoy a grab bag of mind blowers I call poop aids underscore copy. And by grab bag, he means two. Two scenes does not a grab bag make. You simply have to choose. Summer! Summer. Okay, go with me here. Sure. Beth had that answer at the ready far too quickly. But really, the blame is on this alien for not creating a soundproof torture bubble. Grandpa Rick, there must be some scientific way to save him. The visuals are saying wind, the audio is saying wind, but the lack of wind in anyone's hair other than Morty is saying continuity issue. Well, I guess it's nice to know the whole family sucks. It took you almost three seasons to realize that? Rick opens the door panel by hitting it with his fist, but doesn't he know that shooting door panels is the official way to make sci-fi doors open? For the fun of the show, these two have just wiped almost all of their memories. But all indication is that the Mind Wiper would only wipe one specific memory and not an identity. See those two fleshy sacks under his chin, Morty? Grab them. Not specifying which of the six fleshy sacks you're talking about. We're partners, I guess, and we fight aliens? Like Men in Black? Morty can't remember who he is, but he conveniently remembers the movie Men in Black, where one of the main plot lines was about a device that could wipe out people's memories. Scooping up a potentially compromised memory tube from the broken pile on the floor rather than selecting one of the many pristine tubes from the nearby shelves. Leaving your interstellar laboratory garage door wide open. This audible beep would give Rick all the indicators he needs to know that the machine is being accessed by Morty. There's no way he wouldn't hear it and try to stop him from ruining whatever Morty is inevitably about to ruin. There, I'm done. Just stay out of trouble. Believing this would work. What's the point of going on if most of everything that happens just ends up sitting in here? My thoughts on cloud storage somehow make their way into this episode. 
You guys doing Morty's mind blowers? Asks the ice pop eating sister who conveniently wanders into the garage and enters the bunker only seconds before her family ends the episode with a bang, which is almost as convenient as some are also wearing a key necklace needed to access the panel that will save Rick and Morty. I'm saying this is too convenient and Rick and Morty should be dead. There is no way she consumed each of the steps on that card that quickly, and you should never do step number one without reading all the remaining steps to ensure there's no f***ery regarding step number one in the following steps, especially when step one requires you to shoot people. Also making me say steps too many times. No wonder you're constantly fighting with each other and behind schedule. That's a funny way of saying I should have just kept your memories wiped because you're both assholes. Stop true crime bragging. Comment section of my favorite murder episode somehow makes its way into the show. Bitch, my generation gets traumatized for breakfast. Kids. Was it my best work? I don't know. Does it deserve to be shit on creatively? Instead of acknowledging how childhood memories can be inaccurate, Rick gets all defensive as if Beth just dropped an everything wrong with Fruity Land video. This calendar with only four days in the week. You know, it collapsed the quantum tesseract. Adding the word quantum to... No. Wait. Adding the word tesseract to... No, that's not it either. Okay, got it. Combining two sciencey words and adding a random verb to create a phrase that sounds like Rick did something impressive. Cliche. Drawing a portal on a mobile door. Based on the trees alone, it's pretty obvious that Rick ripped off Dr. Seuss. And no one gets away with that without a sin in. Dad, you're right. I'm a terrible dad. The terrible dad then goes on to throw himself from the cliff that won't kill him rather than pushing his unsuspecting daughter to her non-death. And that would have really sealed the terrible dad title into place for eternity. A dad makes a toilet look like R2-D2 and it breaks the front page of Reddit. Insinuating that Rick gives a Star Wars size sh** about the front page of Reddit. No, no, seriously! This hurts really bad! In that case, you'd think he wouldn't wait until being taken to the nest to take out his gun and shoot the threat. No people saw these two people floating in people-sized bubbles and stopped to take a picture and or follow for the views of the people they would surely garner on social media. Your place looks way less like a crack house. Show doesn't clarify if this assessment is based on first-hand experience at a crack house or some are making assumptions based on TV or some shit. It's actually clean, like a cocaine house. Show doesn't clarify if this assessment is based on first-hand experience at a cocaine house or Morty making assumptions based on TV or some shit. I'm simply centered, activated. Writers make Summer suddenly clumsy, as if Jerry isn't annoying enough to show off his powers without provocation. Who wants a smoothie? First off, no one said yes. And second, anyone that does want a smoothie would also like you to put a little more effort into the recipe, and not just put every piece of rinded fruit you have into a blender. Also, Summer and Morty both just stand there and watch Jerry not putting the top back on the blender without screaming, running, or voicing disapproval in any way whatsoever. I'm sure you noticed what she has three of, but guess what she has two of? is a thing that Jerry just said to his children. Are you saying Tommy survived here by having sex with fruity creatures, creating fruity human hybrid offspring, and then consuming their proteins, sustaining himself with an endless cycle of cannibalistic incest? Writers suddenly realize their story's a hair too long and complicated for the show's 20-something minute runtime, so they ham-fist the episode with a bunch of quick-witted exposition wrapped in a plot reveal so disgusting we feel the need to go wash our hands during the commercial break. Dad, do you understand how serious Crutabulon soul bonding is? Nope. And considering it doesn't come up for the remainder of the episode, it's probably not that big of a deal at all. She's got a hot bod like Chitara in Thundercats. If the Thundercats exist in this cartoon universe, would they be considered cartoons? Or by the standards of their reality, would they be considered live action? And if a cartoon universe has its own version of cartoons, wouldn't those cartoons have to be one-dimensional? And what would that even look like? These are the kind of answers I watch Rick and Morty for, and I'm not getting them. After all the time and energy I spent teaching you two about race, you ended up racist. The sin is the writers thinking Jerry would think that he could get away with pretending to think that he could have possibly taught anyone anything. I always find the theater is the best way to clarify things. Somewhere in time, there's a fifth grade version of me watching a performance of The Crucible that would very much disagree. Do you want to see the honey swamp? The same Rick that made the ground bouncy and the water breathable managed to overlook the fact that a swamp filled with honey is many orders of magnitude more dangerous than a regular swamp. I am hungry, and all I could do to pass the time is hump. My dog's inner monologue somehow makes its way into the episode. Leave him alone! <sighs> Gather round, gang! Dinner time! Moments after Tommy has applied his seed, this animal births a new fruity character, and unfortunately the rules of this episode place this sin in the category of meals being prepared too quickly to have been made in accordance with proper food safety measures. All right, that's it. I'm out of here. No one untied Rick's hands. He just slipped out of them to escape. So why not do this before watching the theatric retelling of Tommy's cringeworthy survival plan? But Tommy's still in there, ripping Muppets and eating babies! Here's a thing that Beth said in this episode. Look at some of the sh** you were asking me to make you as a kid. Ray guns? Do they shoot rays or are they named Ray? 
or do they specifically shoot only people named Ray? Hey, these are legitimate questions for a show that's willing to introduce a sentient switchblade. A lightning gun. That's just a fancy taser. A taser shaped like a ladybug? That's just a fancy lightning gun. A pink sentient switchblade. Does it being pink make it worse? Then why didn't you specify the colors of the other objects? Hmm, Rick? And why hasn't Rick fixed his boo-boos? Has it occurred to you that I asked you to make those things because I wanted you to spend time with me? Has it occurred to you that your request for these items resulted in a father that actually made them, thereby encouraging your behavior? Take that to your next counseling session. I, I, I think you have to stab them through the heart or something. Says the guy stabbing the creature through the head. So if the alien heart is the head, then Morty should share that specific information with his family to avoid confusion. People should eat people. They should not. And that's why one pussy plus two pussies makes a bunch of pussies. A bunch? At most, this is a clouder, and you know it. Look, I'm not an evil person. I'm just not very imaginative. But doesn't it take imagination to create the lie that your children were responsible for the breakup? I know Jerry makes no sense, but the writing of Jerry not making sense should make sense. Make sense? This calendar with only five days in the week. We wouldn't dare play the music in the background of this touching father-daughter working moment, mostly because it's a song about taking a shit, and the show is trying to make us think it's a metaphor for fatherhood. Did they have this t-shirt just laying around, or did they spend time making this? Because it's not easy writing on t-shirts. It takes a lot of time to get the lettering right, so this feels a bit like they wasted time on this instead of rushing to stop the execution. Having more fridge pictures of a child that you do not prefer. None of the Variks chose this moment of distraction to attack the warrior woman who slaughtered their kin yesterday. You just got handed an ex machina. Cliche. We're home. Leaving the front door wide the f open. Arnaldo's isn't closed in the dimension where they didn't invent daylight savings. What would we do without you? Find a pizza place that doesn't close before dinner time, or at least not before the sun goes down. By the way, that wasn't time travel. There were just a couple pizzas on the counter. I grabbed them. Rick has to break the fourth wall to explain something so the internet doesn't explode with fan theories about what the insipid detail of Rick not waiting for pizza means in regard to what is and isn't possible. Yo, Jerry, it's the big R. Uh, I killed that alien that was coming after you. Looking out for you, buddy. Show thinks we would momentarily believe that Rick did something nice for Jerry and not see the I f your ex -girlfriend. joke coming from a mile away. You can go ahead and keep that answering machine. Nobody really uses those anymore except for exposition on TV shows anyways. Show cleverly writes its way out of an antiquated joke by expositing its own exposition. But still, exposition. This OSHA violation of an elevator that starts moving before the doors close. Also, discount Daniel Day-Lewis. If they can teleport, why did we take I just the- work here, Steve! Same as you! Look, sometimes the characters in Rick and Morty practically write these videos for me, which actually makes my job harder because I have to get extra nitpicky to justify my existence. Like pointing out that this mail slot was not in the establishing shot of the house that we saw just a few seconds ago. And nobody likes it when I have to do that. Rick, do you need to drink in here? Yes. Not to disregard the obvious alcoholism on display here, but the martini glass is the most spillable adult beverage container ever conceived. And there's been no attempt at displaying any sort of technology that would allow Rick to fall vertically through a portal without spilling his drink. Some kind of alien Guga has infested the Kennedy sex tunnels. The president concludes that it must be alien Guga without testing for chlamydia first. Yeah, that sounds fun. Let's set some boundaries with a spoiled control freak that thinks he runs the world and orders drone strikes to cope with his insecurity. It's or some people call it being a parent. Okay, you're not gonna have fun if you analyze everything. Morty underestimates how much I enjoy my job. As far as he knows, we're still in the tunnels. When should we reveal we can see them? Show expects me to believe that Rick wouldn't immediately know that there was a satellite spying on them, or that he wouldn't have some sort of countermeasure in place that would blow it up, turn it into pudding, or evolve it into an AI capable of explaining that building a spy satellite and getting it into orbit is a huge waste of money when everyone has a cell phone in their pocket. I mean, what doesn't look bad through an illegal spy satellite? It's an ice cream. And yes, 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 you save the world now and then, and America returns that favor by not holding the two of you accountable to its laws. Any of them? Any of the laws? Okay, I can see why turning a blind eye to some laws would be necessary when dealing with giant heads that kidnap the planet and other assorted nuisances, but all laws? You're telling me they could go to Arizona, purchase a donkey, and let it sleep in a bathtub with no consequences? The production team makes a banger of a song for a five-second joke, but has the audacity to not make the banger of an album we all pause the episode to search for. Just promise if the results are too strong, you'll use protection. By results, you mean Summer's choice, right? Right? 
How do you like that, Morty? The absence of torches here makes me question why this scene does not contain a Rick and Morty getting blown up by a f***ing creeper that apparated out of nowhere, causing them to lose over 1,000 levels of XP farming and that damn netherite sword that they were saving for just the right occasion. Followed, of course, by having to work their way back from who the f*** knows where to assess the damage and pray to the ender dragon that their carefully plotted cave system has not been flooded or filled with lava. Or, you know, something less specific. South Park did it four years ago, Morty. They're fast. Or we're slow. Me, every time I carefully craft my own version of a meme that I saw while eating breakfast, only to discover it has somehow become a thing, enjoyed being a thing, and is now no longer a thing before my coffee has hit room temperature. Also, South Park did that episode about the Simpsons already doing all the things and how it doesn't matter, so I don't really have an excuse for not making the meme, and the writers don't have an excuse for not giving us a Minecraft episode. The only way using this portal makes sense is if it's a quicker option than the president just flying there. This means the portal would have to already be there, or at least be closer than the president is. But why? Why would it be stationed in Brazil? Do they have one of these things in every country? Aren't they super expensive? And why am I surprised that the government has the ability to waste my money? I made Sanchezium up, dumbasses. Don't believe everything you read on Wikipedia. Well, sh Excuse me while I go and review several hundred of our videos for... Reasons. I don't doubt a bar like this exists somewhere in the multiverse, but wouldn't it make more sense for the footwear on the Torcosaurus sex to go all the way up to the heel, inverted secondary knee, whatever it is, this current setup does not look twerkable. What does this, what, 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 what does this mean? This means nothing. Jesus. Pull forward and park. <laughs> Uh, even with all the sci-fi hijinks in this episode, somehow the show finds a way to make one of the funniest moments out of a simple frustration caused by miscommunication. Thank you to everyone involved, and especially Keith David, for bringing this hilarious character to life. Israel and Palestine have announced a permanent ceasefire. What? They signed something called the Pretty Obvious If You Think About It Accord. Rick, proving he could do more to help mankind in an afternoon than anyone else could do in ten lifetimes, but he'd rather dick around in his garage. Cliché. An anonymous American diplomat took them to a Star Wars cantina where they smoked perspective-enhancing alien pheromones through a laser hookah. I see no laser. I demand a laser hookah. Oh, and peace in the Middle East. That too. Your approval rating just hit 100%. It is literally, not figuratively, literally impossible for a president to get a 100% approval rating. Everyone could be rich, healthy, and never exposed to war, and some asshole would still say they have the right to be homeless, unhealthy, and at risk of high-velocity lead poisoning. I was knocking out a deterrent. Everyone wants to be knocked out. Nobody wants to be dead. Zack Snyder explaining why his version of Batman kills bad guys instead of subduing them somehow makes its way into the episode. Doctor Who in this mother Proclamations of being the doctor do not make you the doctor. And among other things, Rick is approaching the situation much more like a Dalek. I'd love to understand how I can help you. I can't be in charge of that, Jerry. My mind, my ideas are all part of the variable. The only constant is you. This plan only works if Beth is correct in thinking that there's some ineffable quality inside all of us that no clone, no matter how perfect, could ever fully replicate. And while you all sit there insisting you would definitely know the difference if your loved ones were replaced with clones, I'll be chatting to the AI that built the simulation we live in. Senior year, I took you on a date. Skip? And I just thought, it, lips don't sweat. Lips may not sweat, but the face around those lips does sweat. A fact that turned out to be a deal breaker for in my freshman year. Episode makes a weird metaphor about destroying conspiracies surrounding the Apollo moon landing, the Kennedy assassination, and 9-11. At least, I hope that's what they were going for. And we're hiding from you so you don't kill her. If she's a clone, in a place I picked that you will never find. I think Morty is vastly underestimating Rick's ability to track. I'm sure he has ways of scanning for Morty's DNA or an army of drones that scout the entire planet in minutes. Or maybe he could just track the f***ing cell phone that Morty's decided to keep. You're a terrorist. You're an enemy of the state. And you kicked me in the balls ten minutes ago. Oh, and all those Secret Service people he killed earlier. But no need to bring that up, I suppose. Invisit Troopers, stand down. Why are Invisit Troopers with knives preferable to Invisit Troopers with lasers? I hope I can be of service if uh, you ever find the planet to be in danger. Friends? Sounds good to me. The president thinks he's making a deal with a Rick from another universe, but what makes him think that fly fishing Rick would be any better than regular Rick? He could be just as murdery and insubordinate, but with the added annoyance of being one of those people with a passion for something. Hopefully you didn't just f around and waste your life. Ooh wee. Making us think Mr. Poopy Butthole is going to be a fun callback, then tricking us into reflecting on all our poor life decisions. Pickle juice tastes like garbage. It sucks. 
He may have manifested some sort of butt. Allow me to share with you a motto I believed in throughout my life. Nobody who is an ass man can be all bad. Maybe I just want you to care if I run away yelling. It was just like Sonny said it would be. Nobody cares. So if you really want your grandpa back, grab a shovel. The one that won't let you down is buried in your backyard. Dig a hole, dig a hole, dig a hole, dig a hole, dig a hole. Welcome to McDonald's, can I take your order? I'll have two number nines, a number nine large, a number six with extra dip, a number seven, two number 45s, one with cheese, and a large soap. It's a trap! Uh, apples, apples, apples. It's my vagina. Then the universe exploded into existence, and the remnants of these systems were forged into concentrated ingots. Infinity Stone. It's because losers look stuff up while the rest of us are carving all them DMs. Belief, like fear or love, is a force to be understood as we understand the theory of relativity and principles of uncertainty. Kill me, please. I won't kill you, but I don't have to save you. How come you guys dress like you're in a theme park stunt show, but these guys wear khakis and hockey jerseys? This is the way. After the boom boom, some adapted to the new truth. You speak the true truth. And he wants more! And the Hulkster's giving them exactly what they want. I'll be right back! Deathstalkers, bring me his flesh leather! Witness me! Sorry my grandpa stole your god and ruined your car. You don't turn your back on family, even when they do. I am Summer. Summer, state your deal. You already know my name, and you can see that I'm a machine. I don't know why I'm crying. Why are you crying? <laughs> There's no crying. You know, is this the first part of some kind of magic trick? Illusion, Michael. Mm. Trick is something a whore does for money. God damn it, I love myself. Because I love me, love me. Dad? I would like you to tell me what's in the syringe. Quit around and give her the shot. Come on. I'm a pickle when I feel like it. So, you asked. Well, actually, nobody on this planet ever really chooses each other. I mean, it's all a question of quantum physics, molecular attraction, and timing. It's Maximus, renegade star soldier. That man is playing Galaga. Thought we wouldn't notice, but we did. It was a classic case of guy on the ground. Obviously, I came here last night during a blackout. Oh, man! So this is what the zone feels like. Oh, analyze this! Vance, stay calm! Wake up! You made a deal with a force that's bigger than you. When the time comes, they're gonna ask you to pay what they feel you owe them. It's for the greater good. The greater good. Valima. Valima. Ah! Surprise, motherfucker! I'm gonna lay my head gently on your shoulder. Maybe we can cry, hug, and maybe even slow dance. Don't patronize me, Dean. Dangerous. Oh, Rick Sanchez. You son of a motherless goat. Finally, monsieur, a waffle thin mint. Now, f off, I'm full. The device before you is one of sacrifice. A sacrifice of blood. Mean would be shooting you, Jerry. This is saving a bullet. Do you comprehend the value of the bullet in your barrel? I tell you, fellas, this is the life. Bo -bo -bo -bo. Let's go, in and out, 20 minutes adventure. Four to six days later. Hey, uh, you mind if I put on some music? Not at all. Bird's a word, bird, bird, bird. The bird is a word, bird, bird, bird. Hey, Morty, remember yesterday when I couldn't play the trombone? Well, check this out. It's not, not quite my tempo. What's a knockout like you doing in a computer-generated gin joint like this? Woohoo! I'm out of my awkward state. John, one thing I can promise you, even in this market, is that I never ask my clients to judge me on my winners. I ask them to judge me on my losers because I have so few. Uh, yeah, I think we actually have the audio for his speech here. I just got a free churro because my mom died. The election's got these yellow shirts more riled up than a picture day Jessica. If you're gonna get nasty, I'm gonna leave. Yes, slow Rick, tall Morty. I said... Reading is good. Can we start the story now? See all you fresh-faced kidlets sitting there in your neat little rows? And you're all just pods. Pods waiting for your instructions. From the Ricks and Mortys that believe in this citadel to the Ricks and Mortys that don't. You're screwed. Thank you. Bye. What's this? The Spice Melange. 
They say for your wish to come true, you have to give up something really important. Yeah, but you know what? This one. This one right here. This was my dream, my wish. And it didn't come true. This is the story of a boy with scissors for hands. Return the truth, tortoise! You have no power over me. What the hell is this? A center for ants? You want thingamabobs? I got 20. But I do have a thing at six. Oh god, do I have to keep looking? Them grab boys don't kill him, I will. Who wants a smoothie? What are you talking about, a smoothie, like a, a drink or something? Listen, I've been giving you a pass because I'm charmed that life finds a way, but... If there's one thing the history of evolution has taught us, it's that life will not be contained. Life breaks free, it expands to new territories, and it crashes through barriers painfully, maybe even dangerously, but... Uh, well, there it is. Well, here's the problem right here. A mutated P36 immunosuppression gene that renders them immune to all poisons. <laughs> what is that smell? Ooh. It's poo-poo with a dash of caca. I suppose you're wondering, how do I sustain myself? I am evil. Uh, Therefore, uh, I am uh, lonely. <clears throat> well, that didn't go as planned. I respect your right to believe I pushed you. When you marooned me on that godforsaken spit of land, you forgot one very important thing, mate. I'm Captain Jack Sparrow. I roared, and I rampaged, and I got bloody satisfaction. Tell him Rick and Morty just blew off America. Hey, phrasing! Yes, 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 you save the world now and then. And America returns that favor by not holding the two of you accountable to its laws. Diplomatic community! Wouldn't go well? Can you elaborate? Because of the implication. know how to take out this kind of threat you don't like my plan that's good give me another plan but don't tell me we're backing out doctor who in this motherfucker? i have the power of a thousand cowboys running through my veins right now <laughs>